Hey guys, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. We have the new version of Retroboot 0.10.1 courtesy of Genderbent. This new release has a lot of under the hood improvements such as upgrading RetroArch to version 1.8.1, .1, an easier upgrade method if you're using Retroboot 0.9, Fastboot has been enabled, and databases, assets, and shaders have all been updated. Version 0.10.1 also includes the newest cores by KMFD Manic. A couple notable cores are Dreamcast and Sega Saturn. We'll take a closer look at those once we get into Retroboot. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set Retroboot up, how to add your games, and how to add your BIOS files. I'll go over a couple settings in RetroArch as well. I'll have all downloads you need in the description. First thing you need to do is set up your external storage, like a USB flash drive or a micro SD card and reader. After you plug in your flash drive to your PC, you're going to right click it, go to format. Make sure FAT32 is selected and under volume label, name it Sony all capital letters. Make sure quick format is checked, then hit start. In the Retroboot standalone folder, we have these contents. The folders you're going to be most concerned with are RetroArch and ROMs. Also, this README text file has a lot of information in it. It'll probably answer a lot of questions you may have. We're going to take a look at where to add the BIOS files first. So you want to go into your RetroArch folder, down to the System folder. Most of the CD-based systems require a BIOS file be added. We're taking a look at Dreamcast and Sega Saturn today. So we have our BIOS files in here. For the Sega Saturn, this is the BIOS you want, Saturn underscore BIOS dot bin, all lowercase. For Dreamcast, you want a folder with a DC lowercase, and within that folder you have two files, DC underscore boot dot bin and DC underscore flash dot bin. I'm going to take these files, drag them into that system folder. As for your games, you can put them anywhere on the stick you wish, but there is a provided ROMs folder. I prefer to make some subdirectories, so I would create folders in here like NES, SNES, PS1, and so on. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to copy all the game files into the ROMs folder. For PS1 games, we have Spider-Man and Crash Team Racing. They're in bin and Q format. This is the preferred format to have your games. You can compress them into CHD format and some other formats are accepted, but for the best compatibility, you want to keep them in bin and Q format. We have a couple Super Nintendo games, Demon's Crest and Chrono Trigger. Our Sega Saturn game is Saturn Bomberman. And for Dreamcast, we have Project Justice and Record of Lotus War. For Dreamcast games, the most popular format are CDI or GDI. My copy of Record of Lotus War looked like this. We had the GDI file as well as bin and raw files. For Saturn Bomberman, I have CCD, Q, image, and subfiles. I'm going to take all the files and drag them into that ROMs folder. Now that we have our ROMs in place and we have our BIOS files in place, the last thing to do is to copy all these files onto the root of our flash drive. So you're going to highlight the first three folders, right click and copy and then paste them just like this on the root of your flash drive. And that's all there is to it. You can safely remove your flash drive from your PC, plug it into the PlayStation Classic. You want to do a hard cycle on the system before you start it up, so remove the power cord, plug it back in. We're going to start up the PlayStation Classic and check out the new version of Retroboot. Alright guys, here we go, Retroboot loaded up, and as you can see in the bottom corner, we are on version 1.8.1 of RetroArch. At the very end of the setting, you see this PS1 controller as well as the initial 20 games that came with the system. Now these games do not use the emulator that came with the system, they're using the KMFD PCSX rearmed Neon Core, which means they run much better. So one of the first things we want to do is go to this import content option and scan directory. Go to parent directory and go down to your ROMs folder. If you separate your different systems by folders, they'll be listed here. Otherwise, hit scan this directory. You'll see in the bottom a notification saying that the games are being scanned. To be honest, this is not the best way to scan your games. It is very slow and that's just due to hardware limitations. There are other methods that allow you to scan your games much faster than this and then import that playlist into Retroboot. I do have a video showing how to make faster playlists. We didn't have that many games, so it didn't take too, too long, but if you're looking at adding multiple games of different systems, it can take a very long time. You can see now we have different icons at the top here. We have the Super Nintendo and Dreamcast. We are missing our Sega Saturn and our other Dreamcast game. That's another reason why the import method using this version of RetroArch isn't the greatest. It misses out on a lot of games. But we did get our two PS1 games, Crash Team Racing and Spider-Man. We're going to take a look at some games and then afterwards I'm going to show you some options that you may want to take a look at in RetroArch. First game we're going to look at is Record of Lotus War. This was actually requested by Tape Deck Heart on the PlayStation Classic subreddit. Hit X to enter the game. 
Hit X one more time to run and then you'll be given an option to select what core to use. You have either the KMFD Flycast core or KMFD Raycast core. We're going to try it out with Raycast. Hit X one more time on run and the game should start up. Now I have adjusted any settings in RetroArch and I am using kind of a slow flash drive to play this game. But you can hear there is some sound stuttering. We're gonna start a new game. Got a lot of stuttering on the cutscene. Good of you to come, great hero. Yeah, it definitely seems like the game is running extremely slow. A lot of the time you're gonna to have to adjust your controls since the PlayStation controller doesn't have an analog stick. So that's what I've done here. I bound the analog stick to the actual D-pad. And this is one of those games where you need both the analog stick and the D-pad to play the game. So that's why when I move up and down, the cursor on the menu also moves up and down. So there's some games like this one that don't translate well with just the PlayStation Classic controller. But another one of the improvements that Genderbent made to Retroboot was the inclusion to allow Xbox controllers to be used. Unfortunately, I don't have one that I can show you to test out with, but you can read about that in his readme file. But as you can see here, this game is running extremely slow. Once again, I'm just using the default settings that came with the core. We're gonna move on to another game. Just hit start and select to go into the RetroArch menu and then you can go down to close content. We're gonna check out the other Dreamcast game that we added. So we're gonna go to load content. Hit X on start directory and we should be in our ROMs folder. Once again, it's not the core that's the issue or RetroBit that's the issue. It's just that the PlayStation Classic really is limited in its hardware to play these games effectively. So although the games do look really nice, unfortunately they seem pretty unplayable at this stage. Let's take a quick look at the two Super Nintendo games. Honestly, when it comes to the mini systems, either the NES or SNES Classic and even the PlayStation Classic, you really want to keep your expectations towards the 16-bit and 8-bit levels. It handles Nintendo, Atari, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, and PlayStation games really well. But once you get past that, and even Sega Saturn, we're going to take a look at it in a minute, when you get to like the Dreamcast and anything a little bit higher, more resource intensive, you're not going to get very far with it. So it is a really good emulation machine for the older systems. It plays these games perfectly, and KMFD Manic has done such a great job compiling his cores that everything runs really, really well. <laughs> And here's our other Super Nintendo game, Demon's Crest, looking great and sounding perfect. If you haven't played this game, I highly recommend it. It's one of the best side-scrollers on the system by Capcom starring the Red Armor from the Ghost and Goblin series. <laughs> And last but not least, let's take a look at our Saturn game. We didn't get a playlist for it, so we're going to have to manually load content here. I'm going to open up the Q file for Saturn Bomberman. I'm going to go down to the KM Yabao's Extreme Core. And like I mentioned before, the hardware isn't all there to run these games really well, but KMFD Manic has done such a good job trying to optimize this core as much as he can. This is running way better than it ever had been before. Before we were getting maybe one or two frames per second and now there are some games that are actually pretty playable. You want to try and keep it to less graphic intensive games like Bomberman or Parodius, things like that. Things that are heavy with the 3D graphics probably will not run anywhere close this speed. As you can see, the game looks and sounds really good. It just runs very, very slow. And if this is the only way you're able to play this game, then this isn't a bad option. But if you have any other way to play it, either on your PC or on some other single board computer, like an Odroid XU4, that method is much more recommended than a PlayStation Classic. That's it for all the demonstrations. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you may wanna look into when you first load up Retroboot. The first one is an option called bilinear filtering. I prefer to have bilinear filtering on, but I know a lot of people do not like that and they prefer to have 
bright sharp pixels on their screen. And bilinear filtering is enabled by default on Retroboot. So if you want to turn that off, go over to your settings tab down to video. Push up to go to the bottom of your list. And here's the option for bilinear filtering. Just hit X to turn that off. When we were selecting our games earlier, you may have noticed that in order to run them, you have to select what core to pick from. And in some cases, you have a lot of choices, as with the SNES games. What you can do is assign a core to the entire playlist. To do this, you have to make sure that the playlist is created first. Then once again, go back to your settings options, hit up to go to the bottom of the list, to playlists. Hit up once again to go to the bottom to playlist management. And you'll see any playlist that you created here. Hit X one more time on the system, X on default core, and from here you can scroll through all the cores that are included with Retroboot to find the one you want to load your games with. For Super Nintendo, I prefer SNES 9X 2010, so when I select that and I go back to my playlist, you can see that the games will automatically load with that core. Last thing I want to show you guys is how to change your menu interface, which is what you see right here with the peach background and the kind of moving swirls in the middle. To change it, go to your settings tab one more time and hit X on drivers. Go down to where it says menu, and here's where you have a selection of different user interfaces. It's currently set to XMB. I prefer the Ozone menu. To have it take effect, just go to Restart RetroArch. And here is the Ozone menu applied. You do have a choice of two different colors for this menu, and I prefer the black one. To get there, go to Settings, scroll down to User Interface, down to Appearance, and you have the Menu Color theme right here under Basic White. I'm going to change that to Basic Black. And this is my preferred menu when using RetroArch. And that's all I got for you guys. So a huge thank you to Genderbent and KMFD Manic for teaming up, making this such an awesome program for your PlayStation Classic. Once again, all download links will be in the description. And if you have some trouble setting this up or you need some assistance, I'll leave a link to the Rockin' the Classics Discord and the AutoBleam Discord. And that's it for me. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Eric Colon, Jordy Alex, William Wind, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Dor, Yaroslav Orudzov, Chuck Leah, Din Cardoso, Andre G, Randy Day, and Batman.